everybody, Lance Russell and Dave Brown, and we're all ready to go with another big day championship wrestling. Welcome back, David. Glad Thank to have you here. Much. Glad well, to be back. I'm sure, you. I'm <laughs> glad to have you right here. Boy, I tell you, we got some action coming up today. We got Brickhouse Brown coming in for a single match. Billy Travis Scott Steiner will be here a little bit later on today. Also, six man tag team action. On one side of the ring, you got Don Bass, Gary Young, and Phil Hickerson. Formable, uh -huh. portable what tag team anywhere. And later on today, we'll be looking at uh, the great Cinchy and Sean Baxter going against Pat Rose and Bob Holly. Boy, Quite those day, matches huh? right there are something else, David. Let's get ready. Let's we'll do it. Take time out right now. We'll be back with action in just a moment. <laughs> with Big Max Payne, who coming up in the weeks ahead will have a cage match with Brickhouse Brown. Max? Yeah, you know, Lance, uh, I've been through a lot. Brickhouse Brown has done every dastardly rotten thing possible to destroy me, but I'm still standing. He's brought all these goons in, he brought them in hard and fast, but Lance, I'm still here to talk about it. For Brickhouse, there's only one solution left. One solution, Brick. Sooner or later, you gotta step inside of a cage with Max Payne. That's right, Brickhouse Brown. I'm not talking about nothing else but you and me inside of a cage, Brick. No animals can get in, none can get out. And Brickhouse Brown, there's only room for one lion in the middle of that cage. So Brickhouse Brown, you better get ready and get ready for the jungle because I'm gonna be in the middle of it, tearing you to pieces. Back to Dave. Ooh, with Max Payne. We're ready to go with our opening match here today. Brickhouse Brown is uh, involved in that match, too, and uh, no cage in this one, but uh, Brickhouse on his way right now to the ring. He's got that championship belt around his waist. He's accompanied by Brother Ernest. He'll be going against Tommy King. This will be a one-fall, 15-minute time limit match out of Kentucky at 215 pounds. Tommy King, and out of Miami, Florida, 225 Brickhouse Brown, the referee Jerry Calhoun. Action underway. Oh my goodness gracious, Brother Ernest is here. Wonderful, huh? I guess I guess we're not going to talk too much about your trip to Wrestling Village, USA. Well, no, because uh, there was no trip to uh, the non existent Oh, I'm sorry, we're not Village, supposed to USA. talk about it. I forgot. No, I was... Boy, what do you think about this cage match? Uh, this is the most barbaric thing they have ever done to any of my people. You know, in 1835, they abolished slavery. They had people in cages back and then, and it may have been some of Brickhouse's relatives. But it's probably one of the most thoughtful, inhumane things I have ever witnessed in my life, or ever thought about, seen. But it's not going to be a problem, because he's going to have me outside in the good book. Well, that's the point right there. We want you outside. Well, outside, you know, instead David, of interfering. Tell you, you know, I've always thought you were the one. You're really the backbone in this in this uh, come commentating on. thing. Come on. How much you shine without Lance here? I just, I just, you know, I can just feel it. The glow that you have. Well, thanks, Brother Ernest. I appreciate you know, that. I don't agree I with you. Know, let's, let's just talk about this match going on right well, here. There's You're, not much to it, is there? Brickhouse is just overpowered. Oh, uh, King coming back with a right hand here, huh? I don't know. Look at that, he fires Brickhouse across the way. Oh, oh, what do you call that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the That's right, Brother Brick. That's right. Show these people what they came to see. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Brickhouse Brown. Got him up in the air, drops him back, yeah. suplex. Well, you know, donations were up a little bit, uh, you know, this week because we plugged so much. We want to remind the people that they need to send their donations to Wrestling Village USA. 27 Music Square East, Nashville, Tennessee, 37203. Oh, well, you know. Send anything to him. Hey, a doubled up fist and another one, a big right hand. Uh, what do you call that? Doubled up, no doubt about it. He just hit him with a fist. I really and couldn't see that Dave from over couldn't here. See. Yeah, left uh, the contact uh, lens. I'm sure home he did. Huh? He did it again. Uh, that, yeah, well, the referee. Came hard warming. to tell that day. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> Don't worry, you're going to get a dose of Max meat. I want <laughs> wants Max now, he's saying, uh huh? Yeah. Brickhouse Brown. We're going to make mincemeat out of Max meat. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
Look I for our recipe book. You for may magazine. find a different story later this week. I and, don't uh, think so. I don't think so. Oh, yeah, that's right, Brick. Count as one, two. This one's over. Well, two minutes, 45 day, seconds. Wow, wonderful it's been. That's right. That's right. We're showing them what we're going to do with Max. All right, Brother Ernest with a commentary here. Brickhouse Brown with a victory. The time of the match, two minutes, 45 seconds. We got more on championship wrestling. We'll be back with it in a moment. to Channel 7's Championship Wrestling Action Ring. Just one moment. Do want to take the time to remind you, my good friend, we got it coming Wednesday night. And boy, I mean a bunch of it. There will be two cage matches involved in the Wednesday night action. One of them will have the Southern Tag Team Champions going in there against challengers Billy Travis and Scott Steiner. Gorgeous Gary Young and singing cowboy Don Bass in the cage, let me tell you. That's right, Lance. You know, it's probably one of the toughest matches in professional wrestling, but you know, Donnie Bass, the singing cowboys, out cutting a record right now. Soon to be another million seller, by the way. Mm -hmm. And myself out here doing the talking and looking pretty like I am. We're going to be there, folks. Y'all better come prepared because it's going to be a heavy, heavy night in Boomtown, Evansville. Coliseum will be rocking, no doubt about that. There will be another cage match in which Brickhouse Brown is going to have to be inside a cage facing 300 pound max pain break let me tell you something that's not the toughest thing i had to face in a cage you understand i was caged when i was coming up in the projects and it was hard to get out max and let me tell you something you're going out you're going to be through dealing sucker well max Payne has been looking for somebody just like brickhouse brown to get him in that cage and let it go yeah, with no well, interference. By the way, while I'm standing here, I also like to say something. You know, the stud stable is active and strong all across the Mid South, and Jimmy Gold yeah. and Robert Fuller, you're going to be doing a heavy, heavy beating on Sinchi and that punk Jeff Jarrett. Y'all just try to show up and watch the stud stable take care you of it. You've got to remember Wednesday night, Jeff Jarrett will have that cast on his arm, friend, and he can use it. We've already testified to that. You'll be seeing coming Wednesday night. That's Evansville coming up, and you better make it a point to be out there. The entire card will give you a little bit later on, but it is going to include two cage matches and a tag team action match with Jeff Jarrett and the great Senshi against Fuller and Golden. That's coming Wednesday night. Title. You know, Dave, I'm tickled to death about this match. You know, Fuller, Golden, they've all been interfering in all our matches with Bass and Young. Well, guys, this week, we've got a cage match we asked for, and I guarantee you, we're going to knock some heads and we're going to take those southern belts back. Thank you, Dave. All right, thank you. Good luck in the ring, Lance. Okay, David, we're ready for him as Billy Travis stops Steiner, hits the ring, and their opposition coming in, Randy Foster from Jackson. We've never seen Randy before. This will be his first appearance, and he is in there with, from Memphis, Tennessee, Keith Berry. Across the way from Lexington, Kentucky, Billy Travis. And his partner, the muscle man from the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan, Scott Steiner. We're all set to go with Jerry Calhoun as the referee. And bell time. Off and running on this one fall, 15-minute time limit, about. Keith Eric starting to holler and scream at Billy Travis. Keith will keep you off balance like that. Randy Foster, brand new with us. We haven't had, yeah, we ever had Randy? No, Randy has never been here before. He's, uh, he's a big one, weighs in at 250. He just yeah, took a shot from Billy Travis's Steiner covers with a two, but Keith Eric gets that left shoulder up. Steiner right back at him again. What a powerful son of a gun this Steiner is. Oh, uh, yeah. He and Billy making a terrific tag team. Derek helped up to his feet and into the turnbuckles by Scott Steiner. Here comes Billy, Billy Travis, Lexington, Kentucky. Say hi to Mom, Billy always says. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Billy doesn't need Mom right now. He's doing well. Foster in for the first time, goes into a side headlock. Travis shakes him right away. And boy, the 250 with his shoulder put him right down on the deck. Travis up so quick. Foster got a big smile on his face, having knocked Billy Travis down. <laughs> How about that? Here we go. Body slam on Foster. Travis 
Rich returns the favor with that elbow right smack up at the face and puts Foster down. Tag on Scott Steiner. Ooh, big clothesline and Steiner uh, puts Foster flat on his back. Turns him over, picks him up, and as he runs him back into the rope again for another whip, drop kick this time. Beautiful move by Steiner. Mr. Foster not nearly as happy as he was no. when he first stepped into that ring. Looked so easy when he had Travis down on his back, he didn't realize that guys get up, and that's exactly what happened right then. And when they get up, look out sometimes. Oh, oh, Billy Travis up, wraps the arm around. Keith Eric started it out. Foster, I think, would like to get back over to Eric and make a tag uh, as Travis keeps him in the center of the ring, though. We're about uh, two and a half minutes somewhere around there into this action. It's a one fall 15. Travis goes behind, takes him down. The feet are in the rope. <laughs> He uh, gave him a little love pat. <laughs> he had the shoulders down, but the feet were uh, tangled up in the ropes there, so the referee could not start the count. He, he couldn't have missed that target that he was running. <laughs> <laughs> An ample posterior on Mr. Foster. Steiner runs him back in. Fires him across the ring. Picks him straight up. Look at that power slam. 250 pounder makes a quick tag remembering talking about that cage match coming up Dave these guys originally held the title not for long they ended up losing it when uh, there was a lot of interference on it but they have had the title free that's going to be it they got him in three minutes 17 seconds Billy Travis Scott Steiner the hands raised in victory Yowza! They come out with a very nice win over the team of Keith Eric and Randy Foster. And uh, they did it in very impressive fashion. Time out back in just a moment. Okay, 60 seconds your time, a friend, to tell you about the action coming around the territory and down at the Coliseum Wednesday night, Friday, July the 8th, Owensboro, Kentucky at the Sports Center. Tickets will be on sale on the day of the matches at 5.30. That's on Friday, July the 8th, Owensboro, Kentucky. Now, how about Wednesday night? Son of a gun, you got a night of action there. Bob Holly and Pat Rose will be facing Sean Baxter and Cat Garrett in the opener. Special challenge match. I love this one. Tojo Yamamoto will be teaming up with Emily Arthur to go against downtown Bruno and Sylvia. Can you believe it? Should be a whale of a match. AWA Southern tag title in a cage. Billy Travis, Scott Steiner challenging Don Bass and gorgeous Gary Young. CWA heavyweight championship when Max Payne will be in a cage with Brickhouse Brown. And then the final bout is going to be Jeff Jarrett, cast and all, and the great Sinchi going against Robert Fuller and Jimmy Golden. That's Wednesday, Evansville. Had some comments that he wanted to make. We're going to give him the opportunity, and here he is, Tojo. That's also last week I tell you uh, I've been humiliated by these no good stinking uh, blonde dog, Sylvia, and also downtown Bruno. Yeah. Well, uh, for those people who didn't see it, Tojo, I think it's worth not to embarrass you anymore, but I do think they need to know exactly what happened. I've got a tape on a recap of what happened last week. Let's take a look at it right now. On to the leg. Don Bass over on one arm. Gary Young taking care of those who are interfering. Sylvia pounding Tojo with that kendo stick. And now Tommy King, Reynolds, and Doug Dancing trying to help out. Come on, Robert. Will you get out of there? We need some more help out here. Yeah, well, there was Sylvia standing there beating your brains out. They had you tied up, tore your coat as a man. Mr. Lance Russell, that's not going to happen to me anymore. I tell you what, I found a nice lady, beautiful lady, that will take care of that uh, stinking uh, blonde-headed uh, woman and also the dead uh, leads at the downtown Bruno. Now I want to introduce Emily Arthur. Oh, yeah. 
We remember Emily very, very well, and I can assure you downtown Bruno remembers Emily. Hi, Emily. Delighted to see you back. Uh, so you found somebody to join up with you. That's Toby. right. That's right. It's a pleasure to do it. Well, we are delighted to have you back here. And I been think a while. at least one of them you're familiar with, and that's downtown Bruno. You know him well. The weasel hasn't changed a bit, has he? <laughs> Causing trouble all the time. He couldn't beat me last year. He's not going to beat me this year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know what nerve can I hear calling me a weasel? You know what, I beat your butt all over the CWA a couple years ago, and I'll do it again. And the only reason you're still standing here is because I was too much of a gentleman to punch you in the face and knock your teeth out, you understand? But since this goof here you got with you, Tojo, you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you're Rebecca Steinberg Farmer. You ride on here on that white horse, you can't hear. Hey, come on. Oh, me. Oh, God. Sylvia caught in a side headlock. I mean, Emily grabbed her. All right, Robert. Hey, come on. What do you mean hitting her? You don't treat a lady like that. Get her down there and show her what to do, honey. We're not going to have it. You come on, Sylvia. Get it, get it back up. <laughs> what do you do? Get it over here. You don't treat a lady like that. You're a fine when you come out and hit her right in the back. Nail her from behind in there and, and blast uh, Emily Arthur while she was just defending herself against Sylvia. Oh, boy. Thanks to Scott Steiner and Sean Baxter who came out and uh, said, well, <laughs> mm. boy. We're off and running today, I can tell you that for a living fact. We've got uh, got another big... <laughs> okay, I know we got another match coming up. Here. Whoa, a six-man tag match in one side of the ring. That's just a preliminary. Look at on one side of the ring. Right. Well, you've got all, almost uh, 900 pounds on one side of the ring there. You're talking about Don Bass, Gary Young, Phil Hickerson. Their opponent's in the ring right now. Yeah, here they come. Downtown Bruno is going to be with them. Oh, Breezy wonderful. Corner, Arkansas's ace. There's Phil Hickerson. Back with Don Bass. Those two guys together right there make a three-man tag team. Don't they? And here he comes, the gorgeous Gary Young. Yeah, we're doing fine there. Yeah, we got a match, oh, Gary, please. Gary. Yeah, it's uh, been repinked, I guess. <laughs> All right, this match is going to be a one-fall 15-minute time limit match. Six-man tag team rules apply. Total weight of 658 pounds out of Chippendales, New York, Tom Brandy. Out of Arkansas, Doug Dancing. And out of Memphis, Tennessee, David Johnson. Going against him at a total of over 800 pounds. Out of Little Rock, Arkansas, gorgeous Gary Young. Out of Greasy Corner, Arkansas, Don Bass. And out of Jackson, Tennessee, Phil Hickerson. Downtown Bruno in their corner. Here we go. Gary Young starts against Tom Brandy. Well, with all due respect to Johnson dancing and Brandy, I got to tell you. Oh, you're Shore. a fine one. <laughs> you're I like a good hen fight, don't you, boy? Yeah, well, why didn't you that him? Miss Emily ugly out there, baby? Did Sylvia take care of her? Just wait. It's just the beginning. You know, Lance, this is a special day for me because today contracts were signed for a new man in this table. I'm talking about the big cowboy you see up there, that orange, Phil Hickerson himself, has signed now to be in this table. And that you're going to be seeing him with my troop, baby. I'm so proud. I don't know what to say. Uh, he fits right in with that group that you've already got lined up. Yeah, we know Hickerson from way back. Well, you know you got champions from top to bottom. But what ain't champions? Darn sure championship material. And we're going to be winning everything in this area. Just watch for it, Lance. Watch these boys work in there. This is probably the finest six-man tag team right here put together in professional wrestling. You're looking at the stable working into a happy day. Well, I can't deny one thing. He has certainly got three of the roughest son of a guns you will find around. Bass, Hickerson, and Young. And Phil comes in, rips Doug dancing, and I mean hard. Oh, boy. Mm. Man, he is brutal when he manhandles you. Look at this. Hickerson takes him straight up, slams him down, tags Don Bass. Bass just rammed him right into the uh, top turnbuckle. You know, some 
guys, when you talk about pretty women and ugly women, you don't have any problem differentiating Sylvia from this girl, Ugly Emily. I'm going to tell you that because that's one ugly girl. Whether she can fight or not, she didn't impress me too much, but she sure ain't a looker, is she, Lance? Well, I tell you, it looks to me like if you didn't have anything better to say than that, you wouldn't say anything at all. You get in there and... Listen, I call it like it is, Lance. Yeah. I'm not out here like you, trying to butter these fans up. I tell it just like it is. I see somebody fat and ugly, I call them fat and ugly when they look fine. I say, darling, you are fine. That's the only way to do it, Lance. Uh, you've certainly, certainly got a real jewel in that Sylvia out there, pounding on people. She's calling names. Sounds like she went to your school on etiquette, the way she you know, started talking girl, to Emily. Talking about wanting to get in the ring and get it going with Sylvia. Sylvia's whooped every man in here. She took that stick and whooped them. She'd whoop them with her bare hands if she had to. And I wouldn't put 10 cents to $1,000 against that Emily being able to last in there with her no 60 seconds. Yeah, well, you ask downtown Bruno about Emily Arthur. He can give you kind of an inside clue to that, too. Don Bass rail. David Johnson. Fuller, Fuller saying, don't finish him. Yeah, Take him yet. and punish him. Yeah, he wants them to keep working on him. There's Young off the top rope. Tag made on Hickerson. Young with a forearm across the back. Johnson was almost on his feet. Young stopped that. Hickerson now throws him into the rope. Night. One, two, three. That is it. As Phil Hickerson really finished him off. Tom Brandy and Doug Dancing getting him back over to the corner. Uh -huh. yeah, I know about true champions. 3.28 the time on it. Three minutes, 28 seconds. The win goes to, and no surprise, to Bass, Young, and Phil Hickerson. Time out, back with more. Indicated a little bit earlier, uh, Jeff Jarrett will be here because I want to check in on his arm. Uh, for those people who are not familiar with exactly what happened, it isn't every day that we get somebody that gets a broken arm right here, uh, fortunately. And I wanted to recap all of the things that have involved that upstanding head of the stud stable, the Tennessee stud, Robert Fuller, and Jeff Jarrett. Let's take a look at a little recap about the events that led up to it. Fuller jumps up in the ring, gloms Jarrett. Keith Eric starts to kick on him, and Fuller says, no, nope, bam, and he throws Eric right over the top rope and down onto the floor. He's going for a pile driver on Jeff Jarrett, drives him down to the mat. Robert Fuller jumped Jarrett from behind, slammed him down. Keith Eric tried to get in on it and thought it was great that he was down there. He started kicking. Fuller pushes now referee Jerry Calhoun down. And Fuller dragging Jarrett with that rope around his neck. This is the second time we've seen he did it to Jerry Lawler. And Jeff Jarrett now up around that rope as Fuller cinches the rope up. And now Jeff wheeling around trying to go for the abdominal stretch. Not an easy move. Uh-oh, here out. comes Robert Look Fuller. Oh. He just hit Jeff Jarrett right on the head what? with a bottle. You just you stay away from it. Oh, now, Daddy, I'm going to show you a little bit of my hit. No, come on, Robert. Stay away from that ring. Robert Fuller going up through the ring. He's got a ball bat in his hand. Well, DQ on the uh, Adonis there with Fuller going up in the ring. Jeff has a hold of the bat. He's trying to get out of, yeah, get out of the ring and hold on to that bat, Jeff. Oh, for the sake. Fuller in here with a baseball bat. Further evidence that he is a total idiot when it comes to some things. He brings a ball bat in here with Jared down on the floor. Oh, Fuller! Oh. Great. 
he hit him right in the arm on that ball back. You're crazy. Boy, I heard something. Come on, Bullock, get out of here. Get him out of here. Come on. Get him out of here with that crazy ball back. Uh, come on, come on, come on. A lot of questions about the injury of Jeff Jarrett and about exactly how Jeff is doing. We wanted to come to Jeff's doctor, Dr. Van Gorder, to talk to him about the injury. First of all, doctor, how's Jeff doing? Jeff is doing quite well now. He's recovering uh, very well from his uh, green stick fracture of his forearm. Uh, it's been placed in a cast, and that cast will probably need to be kept on for at least four weeks, uh, re-X-rated that time, and then... Uh, placed in a splint for an additional two weeks. Okay, for the people like me that don't know, will you kind of explain the difference between a fracture and a break and how serious of an injury Jeff has? That sort of Certainly. I think the, uh, the difference between uh, the fractures that, uh, that can be sustained in the forearm, uh, he is uh, at a green stick fracture, which is a small break. It's called a green stick fracture because it's very similar to uh, the slight breaking that occurs when you bend a twig. Uh, it's not a uh, fracture that's all the way through. Okay. One thing that I know about Jeff is he's a competitor and always likes to get in the ring. What will have you advised him about his wrestling? I think for at least the next six weeks, uh, he's going to uh, going to need to rest that. Uh, I would give him perhaps four weeks, uh, and at the time uh, of re-X-raying the uh, the arm, if it has healed satisfactorily, I may give him another another two weeks. But for the time being, I'd like to say tentatively six weeks of uh, of rest from that uh, from that injury. And about four to six with that cast on, right? That's correct. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate your time, Doctor. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Okay, that kind of is the story. That's four and a half painful minutes for Jeff Jarrett because it has not been a fun one. Here he comes right now. We ask him to come in here today and clarify direct from his mouth exactly his condition. So many people have asked us about how he's getting along. You can obviously see that he's not in the pink, but he's still looking good. Jeff, how you doing? How you doing but glad to have you back here. We've had a lot of people that have been curious about the arm and how you're doing and what the situation. So you tell them. Well, Lance, first of all, I'd like to say I'm just glad to be down here. I'm glad to, glad to get out of the house. You know, I hadn't been able to do much working out, but uh, I've been doing some running and uh, trying to do some leg weight. I can't, I can't do much uh, working out with the weights, but uh, I'm trying to get stay in shape, that is, and... Uh, I guess I just can't wait to get back. Uh, the doctor said it'll be a, another two to three weeks, and I go back and have another uh, appointment with him, and uh, he said he's going to re-X-ray it then. And, and, he, and he also, I, I heard him say when Randy talked to him that he might... But, um, oh, come out here, Fuller. Now, you've already caused all the trouble in the world. Yeah, laugh, laugh. I knew this boy right here was as dumb as they come. I talked about your mama being retarded, boy, and I did it because it's true, and your daddy ain't a darn bit better. But I'm going to tell you something, that goose face. Oh, that's real nice. Come out here and take care of the little titty baby okay, there. Huh? Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's it, Jeff. Robert, out here and try to we don't need any of your conversation. I've been waiting when you was going to do that. Come out here and take care of the pup, huh? Yeah, you bring out nine guys out here for crying out loud. and you nine guys. You don't even belong out like here. Him. Why don't you just oh, get out of here? As far as that goes, Jeff. Okay, Jerry, we got this guy. He needs let, to get out of here. Let me tell you something, you big, long drink of water. Oh, you make me want to throw up, you jerk. Let me tell you something, Robert Fuller. You better watch your I've stood in the back and I've watched you hang Jeff and I've watched you break him with a, a Coke bottle over his head and I sit like an idiot and watched you break his arm. But I'll be damned if I'm going to let you whip him while he's got a busted arm. Now, I didn't come out here to fight and I'm not staying in it sticking my nose in his business. I'm leaving right now. You do whatever you want to do, but you're not going to bust him up with an arm broken, and that's the last thing I'm going to do. Okay, now just let it go at that. Oh, Robert! You guys stay back!
back out of it. Hey, come on. We need some help out here. Oh, Fuller, you don't need anybody. You can do it all yourself. Robert. You get two or three of you out here. You got to say about that. You got Look at how many of you got. Okay. All right. It'd be fine if you were one-on-one, -on -one, but you can't do that, Robert. You got to get out here and have all your guys. Any more or not? Oh, God. That's disgusting. Come on, Phil. Keep away from him. That's good. That's good. for something the size keep in the arm. Boy, I am telling you. You okay, Eddie? Okay, we gotta take a break. We'll be back here in just a minute. again in just a moment. Wednesday night, Evans will call us in, brother, it is going to ring. I'm talking about a big night of action, two cage matches, plus the fact you're going to have a special challenge match with Yamamoto and Emily Arthur against downtown Bruno and Sylvia, and Fuller and Golden against the great Senshi and Jeff Jarrett with a cast on. Now, Max Payne will be there, this time in a cage, Brickhouse Brown across the way. That's right, Lance, I've been waiting for this. Yes, sir. Because Brickhouse, you've been running, you've been hiding, and you've been evading me every way you could, Brick. But this time, there's no way out, baby. A steel cage when you climb inside, there's only going to be one other person in there. And that's me. And if you're lucky, maybe a referee might be there to save your life. But break out! You better remember one thing. In the jungle, there's only room for one king. That's right, Brick. One king of the jungle in a cage. And it's going to be me. Because Brick House, I don't plan on leaving there with anything less but a CW8 title around my belt. Listen, Brother Ernest is going to be on the outside, but he will be on the outside of that cage. That's right, Brother Ernest is going to be out there, out there where he belongs with the rest of those little heathen animals, Lance, and I just plan on keeping him out there. And whatever it takes, Brother Ernest, I'm going to keep you Max, out there. Max, let me ask you this. Now, they tried to break your leg. You well know the pain and all the suffering you had. How about Fuller breaking that Jeff Jerry? Let me just now, tell you something, Lance. That's the most disgusting, repulsive thing I've ever seen. And if I was in Jeff Jarrett's shoes, I'd do whatever it takes to get back at a dirty, no-good bum like Robert Fuller. Because if it was my dad, I'd have to do what it takes. Because when it's your family, everything else is second. And Jeff's doing whatever it takes, and he's doing what he has to. Well, you're going to see some action. He'll be swinging that cast coming up Wednesday night. Okay, we're going to be ready to go with our final expiration of time tag match in just a moment. We've got Pat Rose and Bob Holly. Yeah, Jerry, you okay? Yeah, Lance, can I take just a minute of your time? I want to say something to the people right now. I've tried. <sighs> I'm sorry. Uh, you know, more than anything in, in, in the whole world, I wanted Jeff. You know, I'm, I should have lost it. Yeah, you know. Take a light, Jerry. I more know. More than anything in the world, I wanted Jeff to take my place. And I didn't want anybody to say that I had set him in this business. And I'm telling all you people from my heart that I have 
stood and watched him get, get his arm broke and, and didn't do anything. And that damn day is over, folks. You know, you know, when you have a son and you want him to follow in your footsteps, you, you can't take him by the hand. But damn, it's hard to stand and, and watch him get mutilated. And I, Robert Fuller, I'm talking to you now, guy. I'm no longer on the sidelines because Jeff can't make it with you and your pack of thieves. He can't make it. So I'm sticking my nose in from today and, and from here on out. And I want to tell you something, I'm changing the card. It's going to be Jeff, because I stood out here and ran him off like a goof, and that cast is more of a weapon. He's tougher now than he was before he broke his arm. He used it pretty good. So I'm going to... I'm going to change that card, and it's going to be Jeff and Mantell, and I'm going to be in his corner. And I want to tell you something, Robert. That hag you run around with you with that stick. Jeff won't hit her. But I'll bust her right in her nose and I'll take that stick. Yeah, there you are. Hey, Robert, there you are. Now you oh, pause hold a minute, buddy. You let me tell you something. I know you're crazy now, man. I know it. And you should not have been able to breathe. You wouldn't have the problem with that punk that you got right now, baby. Yeah, you're... You take that and smoke it in your pipe. Let me tell you what you take and smoke in your pipe, you long drink of water. I knew your daddy for all my life. Yeah. I was his partner for eight years, yeah. and I respect him then, and I respect him now. What I don't know, Robert Fuller, is who the milkman in your neighborhood was. Because you ain't Robert, you're not Buddy Fuller's son. You're some milkman, son. And brother, that makes you a bastard child. What are you There's always, not one, always. Oh my God, they piled up. No! Come on, come on. Right. You got it. Get off. Oh my God. There's a pile rising right there on the floor. around. Never one on one. Okay, we got an expiration of time match coming up here. Uh, David? This one's going to be to the expiration of time and in the ring right now. A rather formidable tag team. One, out of, out of, one of them out of L.A. That's Bob Holly. The other out of Florida, Pat Rose. They weigh in a total of 457 across the way. Out of Pensacola, Florida, Sean Baxter. And from Tokyo, Japan, with Tojo Yamamoto uh, out of his stable, it's the great Sinchi. Great Sinchi, Sean Baxter against Pat Rose. And Bob Holly, it's Pat Rose starting against Sean Baxter. This one has the makings of a fine, fine expiration of time match. Brother Ernest with a smart remark looking at the uh, green attire of of the great Senshi over there saying, who are you guys wrestling, Gumby? Gumby, yeah. 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 You may find out here in a few minutes. Baxter back into a corner. Pat Rose using the fist. Whoa, nice reverse. Big backdrop and Rose goes down. Rose looking for a tag in the corner. At least looking for the corner. He found that. There's a tag. Bob Holly will be coming in. Holly out of California. Davey, I'm going to run back and check on Jerry. Okay. I'll be back. Sure. Yeah, I'm a chair, I just 
Yeah. You've got it. Yeah, that's a good idea, Brother Ernest. There's a chair at ringside for you. Have a seat. Uh, hey, look at Bob Holly flying through the air. Sean Baxter. Really moving him around, and Holly decided it's time to get out of here for just a minute. Over, and Brother Ernest says, what's going on? Flying back in the ring. He does. Bob Holly back in there. Sean Baxter waiting for it. Baxter teamed with a great century. Baxter makes the tag. Sinchi. Grabs up the left arm. Jab to the ribcage, into the side of the head. Off the rope. Just a very high-placed boot. Bob Holly has run into the great Sinchi. I don't believe he'll be talking about Gumby. Sinchi, the right hand, got a cover. Can't make it stick, though. Referee there to start the count, but already Bob Holly had broken out of the cover. He's on his feet, back to the corner. The tag made. Pat Rose will be coming back in. Rose for his uh, first look officially at Sinchi. Sinchi's got him back in the corner. Tag made. Sean Baxter. Baxter, young wrestler. We've seen him here for several weeks now. Boy, he has sure looked good. Rose fires him into the ropes. Baxter coming off of there. That caught a clothesline. Rose tagging Bob Holly. Oh, look out. Double up. Rose held him up. Holly clothesline. And there's a count of one. Count of two is all he gets. Sean Baxter is still alive. That Rose back in. Stepped right on the side of his face, Sean Baxter. In some trouble here against Pat Rose. We're about three minutes into this first fall action. Expiration of time match. Maybe one fall, maybe three or four. We've got time for him. We're going to have some championship wrestling for you. Sean Baxter off the ropes. Power slam by Pat Rose. He caught him as, grabbed him with his momentum still intact and just wheeled and slammed him down to the mat. Where's Holly going? Oh, he's climbing the rope. That's what he's doing. He's on the top rope. Oh, halfway across the ring, and he lands right on Sean Baxter. Here's the cover. Sinchi had been watching from the corner. He came in to stop that count. Baxter caught from behind by Pat Rose. Bob Holly now steps outside. Rose with a body slam and a cover. One. Ooh, only one. Count starts again, but again, Sean Baxter able to keep the feet moving enough to get the shoulder up off the mat, and that stops the referee's count. Brother Ernest watching intently from the corner. Pat Rose trying to make it a one, two, three and take home a victory in the first fall, but so far he cannot do it. Four minutes, 20 seconds gone in this one. Bob Holly coming back in. Holly the California, wrestling out of California. Baxter turns. He got a shot for Pat Rose as he went to work on Holly. He starts for the corner. He is tripped up by Holly, but still he made the tag. And the great Sinchi is back in. Sinchi. Bumping Holly high over the back. There's a cover by Sinchi. Count of one is all he gets. Five minutes gone in the first fall. Look at that back kick by Sinchi. Boy, that stopped him right dead in his tracks. Holly still not pinned. The one count. Referee getting the count started, but so far wrestlers on both sides able to kick out of it before they are really in danger of the three count. At one or just before two as far as they've been able to get out of it. Pat Rose working against the great Sinchi. Rose forcing him out of the corner. He, uh, Sinchi was headed for his corner. Kick Gumby and don't be pokey about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, speaking of kick, 
It's Sinchi with a kick. Boy, he nailed Rose. Nailed, uh, Rose was headed for the corner to get him. And Sinchi just brought that boot right straight up, and Pat Rose ran into it. Uh, Gumby don't do bad. No, he didn't. <laughs> Baxter got poked in the eyes by uh, Pat Rose there. Bob Holly pounded him from behind, uh, using the hair to flip him back out into the center of the ring. Russell's out of Los Angeles. They're a good team together. You got to give them credit for that. Rose and Holly with a lot of experience together, and they look very good. Mm -hmm. And Sean Baxter puts a shoulder on Holly. Holly rolls over and is up, and boy, he met him with a foot. Spun him like Holly's been going to school on uh, Cinchy there. He had his foot high in the air, and Baxter ran right into it. Pat Rose also using the feet. He picks Baxter up. Quick slam. Goes to the ropes. Drops down on him with the upper arm. It's a count of one, two, but Baxter has a boot over the bottom rope, and that stops the count at two. Pat Rose, I think, th thought he had him that time. Yeah, he really did. You're right, Dave. But it was not to be. Sean Baxter still in the match. Seven minutes, 15 seconds gone. First fall action. Been good action so far, let me tell you. Pat Rose and Bob Holly, they work together well. And they have done it today against Sean Baxter, the great Sinchi. Look out, Baxter thrown through the ropes down under the floor. Rose stalking the great Sinchi. Sinchi says, you want to fight me? All right. He steps through the ropes. Brother Ernest kicking Sean Baxter for good measure down here. There's Ernest walking back into your picture as though nothing had happened. Mm. Rose. Baxter. Baxter flips over. Shoulders are down. A blows. But Holly is there to break it up. Bob Holly stopped it. It looked like maybe Sean Baxter would be able to get a three count as he had flipped back into the ring and was able to take Pat Rose's shoulders down to the mat. Here's Holly taking the tag from Pat Rose, and he takes over on Sean Baxter. Uh, mm, what a move by Holly, huh? Two counts at two. But Baxter kicks out at the two count. Boy, I tell you, numerous pins in the match for counts of one and two. So far, nobody's able to been get that uh, able to get that magic number three. Eight minutes, 32 seconds gone right now. Holly with a front face lock on Sean Baxter and Holly with the size advantage really pouring it to him but look at Baxter digging trying to get uh, trying to get over to the corner where he can tag Cinchy Baxter knowing he needs the tag he got it but did the referee see it that's the question I don't think he did he did not he was trying to get Pat Rose back out Sean Baxter caught by a double upper arm a cover by Pat Rose count of two but Baxter kicks out at the two count Rose tries it again with a slam to the ropes. He drops, but Baxter is gone. Brother Ernest explaining to Pat that is not what he wanted to happen. Rose, boy, did he look at his it. right hand. Look at Sinchi taking on both of them. Boy, he nailed him with a back fist, bang, elbow into the midsection, Baxter in on Bob Holly. So it's Rose and Holly who are now seeing with both of Sinchi and Baxter in there. They're finding out pretty doggone tough team if they hadn't already guessed it. Look at this. Uh, Brother Ernest with the good going to be a disqualification. Referee saw him, Dave. All right, referee did see in nine minutes, 58 seconds. Brother Ernest has just gotten his team disqualified. Yes, he did. Climbed up on the ring apron with that good book and nailed John Baxter in the head. And it's going to be a disqualification in this fall uh, that will go to Cinchy and Sean Baxter. What was the time on that? Nine minutes, 58 seconds. 9.58. Disqualification win. First ball, Cinchy and Sean Baxter. We're going to... Well, wait just a minute. Yeah, Eddie. I'll just take a second, but 
Jerry Jarrett was out here a few minutes ago and he made a card change and Jerry was upset and you know you can understand why. Sure. And he said it the card had been changed to Jeff Jarrett and Mantell. Mm -hmm. And he made a mistake. The card is Jeff Jarrett and Sinchi with Tojo. Okay, so it'll be Jeff and Sinchi in there. All right, we gotta take a break, be back in a moment. We'll have time to be back next week. That's Dave right. Brown, Lance Russell saying bye-bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling. <laughs>